please bear that in mind. And especially because this degree program that you're currently <coughs> on is the most successful computer networking degree program in the whole of the UK. So the last graduate recruitment statistics, every single person who left this program walked straight into a graduate level job, 100% graduate level employment. And that is one of the things that I want to maintain. And I can't do that as students are sat at home playing World of Warcraft. So you take that number from the amount of people that start here, and if people leave from year one, you deduct that from the one... If you leave in year one, you yeah. do not become part of the statistics, no. Okay. So, but they only begin in year two. Let the statistical analysis a kicks in. Yes. Yeah. Actually, it's year three. So, so it's oh. you start on year three and then progress through. Please. Okay. What's the percentage of people who um, drop out during the first, second, third year? So now, you have made a mathematical error by asking that question. Uh, so the third and, and, and look around the room year. and tell me why it's a mathematical error. Because percentage wise, changes dramatically yeah, in the number, number of people. people in the school. Oh, yeah. And if I have, let's say, three people drop out, that is 10%. If I have two, then that comes right down to, what, 7% or so. Um, and so that's, that's rather a shame. I would, ex I would expect one, two people every year, one either failing and moving on, or transferring to another degree program. And that typically happens for the largest array of reasons that you can possibly think of. To my grandfather's ill and I want to move back home, um, my girlfriend's moving over here and I want to move along with her, or the other one I split up with my girlfriend and I want to get away from her. Yeah. And, the reasons are so various because at this stage in your life, there's so many different things happening in your personal life as well. The weirdest one I've heard is some people doing this course for doctors <coughs> seem to be the sooner panels or something. Has that anything to do with anything? They dropped out to uh, sell solar panels? I've no idea. No idea. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit confusing. Just complaining about solar panels and saying oh, I did like the course, something, something, solar panels. I mean, maybe it's about three or four years ago. Um, we have never had solar panels at a new course. Um, I have a new reason for dropping out, that's good. Um, I, mean, I, I, I stand in front of you uh, being the person with the responsibility to make changes um, according to what feedback we get from graduates that should be on an undergraduate degree programme and based on feedback that we get from you guys. So I do stand here with the ability to do that. If you do have an issue, and it does happen to be about solar panels, please tell me so I understand what it is you might be talking about. Please. Um, in the labs, are we going to be using the real kit or the new simulator? You'll be using a mix of simulation and the real kit. Uh, in the simulation, are we going to use an uh, GS3 or Cisco packet tracer? Um, you will, now. You won't be using those because those aren't what we simulate. Okay. You'll be using the real kit when you're doing that, those applications use for configuration issues. Yeah. So you'll be configuring things in the real kit. Okay. Um, simulators you will use when you're looking at uh, managing, designing, and analyzing yeah. networks. Um, so where, where, you, where you can have yeah. Yeah, three autonomous systems, yeah. uh, we will we'll run a simulation okay. for that. So we'll be using that way short to monitor traffic as well. I like you, you're good. <laughs> yes. And so then what? Uh, a a sorry, what is the amount of a processing power that the simulation kit has? Because if you run a system back it, it's, a, it's an extremely cut down version of the actual routers and switches. But okay. will the simulation be <coughs> at the same any, level? Any equipment emulators mm -hmm. are not what you'll be running simulations for. So if it's an equipment emulator, you'll be doing that on real kit, oh, yeah. such as Packet Tracer. If you're running a simulation of a network, and that simulation <coughs> happens to be of GNN, or it happens to be of a level three network, or something like that, um, you don't have the amount of traffic uh, 
be able to go through your HP kit um, or your Cisco kit. And so therefore we run a simulation of that. I think there's a, there's a little bit of confusion. Can I draw some things on the board? Sure. Um, just so I can, I can get across the two scenarios that I'm talking about. Now, you may or may not have heard of um, Cisco Packet Tracer. And Cisco Packet Tracer allows us to put things like computers here, which connect together to a router and might connect together to another router. And then we have another machine over here. And on this, we're using Cisco IOS. And we are configuring. We're configuring stations. Now, you can use any emulation package to do that. That's absolutely fine. There are loads that exist on, on the internet. Um, you might want to become familiar with some, should you wish to do so. But this, you'll be using kit within the laboratories. Now, the other situation is you might have heard of um, applications such as OpNet, uh, NS2, and in this scenario, as opposed to having my computer connected to a router, connected to another router, connected to another computer, all of the configuration is almost automatic, depending on what you're doing. And the reasons why we'd use these sort of simulators is for running tests and analysis uh, of network performance. So in Cisco I can set up, oh this is this IP interface happens to have this IP address and this subnet mask, whatever else. We're using this particular routing protocol across these domains. Um, but we don't know for example, if the architecture of our network is going to be able to support our users' demands. We're just configuring a network. In OpNet, NS2, or any other network simulator, we would set up this network, in this case it was exactly the same, but we can run tests which would say, okay, out of here we're going to have one megabit per second uh, of Skype traffic um, coming in, also with this I'll just throw in some nouns here, aggregation point into a network service provider, um, we're also going to have 8 megabits per second of traffic, um, which is going to have a burstiness value of 2. And this gives us our variability in traffic loading in the network. And we can measure what we refer to here, the end-to-end -end delay for an application packet to get from end points, or one point to the next. You can't do that in a packet tracer. And the reason why we do this, if anyone's heard of an SLA, a service level agreement, is to ensure the network architecture we're building is going to adhere to a service level agreement that we might have with some of our customers. Mm -hmm. Either other network service providers or actual customers that are renting network capacity off of us. I want business. Okay, so, okay, so let's say BT have got mm -hmm. the service level agreement to a supplier business. We're in an independent and private network line. Yep. And two a service, let's say one uh, one gig uh -huh. of, of of data the speed of the service. Then would they put it through OpNet to verify whether that system would be able to run at that speed? Uh, I I don't know the specific example, but I do know that BT uses OpNet. Okay. So if the, the answer may well be yes, they certainly use it for other things. For okay. that particular example, I don't know. Okay. Digressed. Um, uh, where was I? We are on this slide, weren't we? Usually it means about half the hour of time spent less than labs, and the rest of the time is self-study time. Is there anybody here who will actually study progressively all the way through the year, or is everyone going to be like me and only study for a few weeks before I have to sit the exam? Yeah, progressive. Progressive? Mm -hmm. I'm not too sure whether I can do that. <laughs> <laughs> There's always, there's always been yeah, that is, yeah. always. <laughs> um, be, be aware of that, guys. If you are going through the year and you're sat in a lecture and you have no idea what the lecture is talking about, that means you're probably behind. 
And that means that when it comes to these very compressed six weeks blocks where you need to learn everything you're supposed to have been doing for the entire year and you fail, <coughs> you're in a disastrous situation. So again, talk to your class rep, talk to me, talk to your personal tutor, um, get some help with overcoming any of these issues. I need to go backwards to um, uh, this. Attendance and engagement. You must attend all timetable sessions. You must engage with your studies. Appendix 4 of the regulations. And you remember that I mentioned something horrible along the lines of whatever you do, don't try and expect what might happen in two things that occur during the year from the assessment board board examiners. Um, these are available for you to look at. Examination and assessment regulations. If I could spell assessment. I hope for that to be the one. Programs are absolutely unuseful. Uh, and this is going to be my embarrassment at my inability to be able to find this. <sighs> okay, I'm going to be unable to find this. I wanted to. I had my hard copy. Appendix 4 of the regulations actually states within a four week block, if we do not think that you're attending and engaging with your studies, then we can withdraw you from the course. So that's why I say here, you must attend all timetable sessions, because that means that you will ensure you progress adequately on the degree program. That's it. How, 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 do, how, do, how, how do I do? Uh, I keep a record. I keep a record of this. Yes. Um, or or when register. You, when you attend lectures, mm -hmm. um, I know for one lecturer, he will send around a register. When you attend laboratories, you'll have your names registered in the laboratories. So we'll have an idea about which laboratories you are and are not attending. Okay. Yeah, okay. And if I don't see your name attending lots and lots of registers for four weeks. Um, according to the university, I can withdraw you from your course, yeah. uh, which is rather harsh. Um, and I'd hope to have a conversation with you first before doing that, to make sure there aren't any sort of personal issues that you, uh, Excuse me. you're experiencing. Um, I was wondering if, basically, say there's one, is there more labs on the same unit on per week, or just one lab per week, as in the same unit? Will you ever have more than one laboratory per week on a unit? No. How about lectures? How about? Lectures. Lectures. Yes. You may well have more than one lecture per week. And that will depend very much on the lecture schedule. It's highly unlikely though. Um, I'm just thinking because for my, I teach first year mathematics, which you guys do not do. Um, and that means that I have three one-hour lectures, which is rather harsh for those students doing mathematics. But I don't, top of my head, I don't think there's any units that you're doing that has more than one lecture a week. Off the top of my head. Please. With the um, attendance, you said about the four-week um, periods, what are, um, is there sort of circumstances where you wouldn't, like if you're, for example, in hospital, you've had... Oh, please let us know if you're in hospital. Yeah, I was just saying, <laughs> if you're like, in hospital, if you like, accidents or that sort of thing, is there a sort of circumstances where you wouldn't you would think otherwise? Guys, anything which is exceptional, let us know and we'll deal with it. Right. There are regulations in place to cope, and there's also a regulation which says you can depart from these regulations and do what you want. So, I can. Yes? It's the best way to find out um, your emails that contacted, so I can see that we're going to need that. What's my name? <laughs> Google Nick Savage. <laughs> um, 
all of the university staff email addresses are first name dot last name at port.ac.uk.